What's up, Bills Mafia? Ryan Thomas here for another Sunday morning edition of the Thomas Take Sports Podcast. I am joined by Kevin Carroll of Spectrum News Buffalo. Kevin, thank you so much for joining me. No problem. Pleasure to be here. Looking forward to uh, this big game today. <laughs> we got a big one. We got, the, we got the biggest. I think this is the biggest game of the season so far as the Buffalo Bills take on the 2-4 and four New England Patriots. Who would have thought that the Patriots would be 2-4? and four? I didn't think they'd do well, but I didn't think they'd do this bad through the first six games for the Patriots due to COVID. What, what is your thoughts thus far on this 2-4 and four Patriots team? You figure with Tom Brady uh, now with the Buccaneers that the Patriots would probably take a step back going into the season. But then you looked at how the Patriots handled the Seahawks. I believe that was week two. And it mm -hmm. was like, you know what? The Patriots might not be as bad as we thought. And then Cam Newton has the COVID issue. Stephon Gilmore has COVID. And the Patriots haven't looked the same since Cam Newton missed that game against the Chiefs. Even the game against the Chiefs, the Patriots' defensive game plan against uh, Kansas City, which is what I think the Bills tried to do when they played Kansas City as well to force uh, KC to beat you with the run. It looked like the Patriots just needed a healthy Cam Newton back and they'd be fine. But uh, from the last couple of weeks, that's just not the case with this team. And it's weird looking at the bottom of the screen, seeing Patriots two and four, Bills five and two. It's very weird, especially when you mentioned that Tom Brady is now playing quarterback for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I never thought I'd say that sentence. And not only that, it looks like Tampa Bay has finally found their mojo. Meanwhile, the Patriots are kind of on this downturn. And the biggest storyline to me heading into this game is the question down below, can Buffalo pick up their first win over New England in the Sean McDermott era with all of these guys out, Kevin, Stephon Gilmore out, Kyle Duggar out, Justin Heron out, and now Julian Edelman, who has been a thorn in the side of Bills fans for the last, what, 10 years? The fact that he is out. I mean, if there was ever a time for the Buffalo Bills to pull this off, this is it, right? Oh, absolutely. I think I just saw online that their rookie tight end, Asi Asi, didn't travel with the team. He was a healthy scratch uh, last week anyways. Not that he was a huge weapon. The tight ends haven't really done much for the Patriots at all this year. But uh, – you go back to, I think it was 2011, that time with Ryan Fitzpatrick at quarterback. Um, my family lives in New England. They came out for that Patriots game talking trash the entire weekend like that was going to be nothing. And they <laughs> sat there while the Bills ran the clock out and beat the Patriots. That was a huge win. This win, if the Bills managed to pull it off, I actually think – signals the end of the Patriots' dominance over the Bills. And I think that the way this game sets up, you don't want to be too cocky, but there is, looking at the game on paper, there is no way this Buffalo Bills team should lose to this New England Patriots team. No way at all. And even though the Buffalo Bills are 5-2, and two, I think that there is a very, I guess, peculiar, interesting, one week they look Dominant. I mean, they've started the season 4-0. and They've had these, I guess you could say, lackadaisical weeks against the Tennessee Titans, against the Kansas City Chiefs. And even last week, Kevin, against the New York Jets, they were able to pull off an 18-10 to victory. But it was off of the right foot of Tyler Bass. What is going on with this offense and what is going on with this defense? What do you see as the strengths and weaknesses of this Buffalo Bills team thus far? Okay, so first, I'll start with the offense. I think teams started to get what the Buffalo Bills offense was through the first four weeks, and teams started playing uh, them differently, not allowing the Bills to take the deep shot downfield. You get John Brown back. John Brown is the key to this whole thing. You brought Stephon Diggs in to make the big splash plays, but he's able to do that because of John Brown. We've seen the last couple of weeks with John Brown out, even though I think he played against the Chiefs, he wasn't uh, even close to what you wanted right. him to be. So I think defenses have figured that out. That's going to happen as the season rolls along. Defensively, I think because of COVID and how the offseason went, all defenses across the board are basically a step behind, but slowly building up uh, to where they need to be. Uh, better outing, be it against the Jets last week for uh, 
the Bills defense, but you kind of saw in the second half of the game against the Jets what the Bills' identity could be on defense, uh, getting to the quarterback, Jerry Hughes, with a solid game. So I think that's it's slowly coming into shape. You know, you often hear coaches say you want to be playing your best football in November and December, and here we are, and it's, it's just funny that it's the Patriots that maybe the Bills could kick things into high gear. That's the perfect opponent to find that motivation factor, right? The team that's been kicking our butts the last 20 years. And it obviously helps knowing that Tom Brady isn't on their sideline. That is also a great help. I look at it this way too, Kevin. Like It seems as if league-wide, a lot of these teams, due to the fact that they didn't have that stable preseason, it's almost like there has been just this lackluster, just kind of finding your rhythm for some of these teams through the first few weeks of the season. Now we're in that meet, that middle of the season, where a lot of these teams are essentially finding the rhythm. The Bills could be headed down that direction. I mentioned Tampa Bay. Uh, Tennessee is uh, honestly, you know, they've played tough against virtually everyone. How much of a factor do you think this season ha- has – how much of a factor has it been, I should say, that we haven't seen a preseason for the entire NFL? Yeah, I think um... – we mentioned, or I mentioned 2011, I believe that was the work stoppage year going into that. And I think we are seeing a lot of the same, you know, you have quarterbacks who can get together with wide receivers and work on running routes in the passing game and stuff. The defense players, they're unable to hit really with uh, no preseason i mean even in practice when you when you're full go it's not the same as if you had a preseason game so it does feel like maybe the month of september while it counts as regular season games was kind of like a tune-up for a lot of teams and then you know the playing field kind of leveled out a little bit um and now and this is what I think is key for the Bills, now is when they have to start playing their best football with the game against New England, which at the beginning of the year, it was like, well, this is going to be a huge game. Now it seems like one the Bills should win. You have Seattle that they're going to have to deal with. You have Arizona that the Bills are going to have to deal with. They have a tough stretch coming up, and it would be really nice to see the Bills get back into that rhythm offensively that they were – And even against the Rams, the Rams are a really good team. And, you know, you look at Miami, Miami has done well, too. If you look at what the Dolphins did, uh, of course, Fitz isn't the quarterback anymore. But what the Dolphins did on the road in San Francisco, the Bills need to stay at this high level where they are. And I'll admit it, over the last couple of weeks, it's been scary might be the wrong word, but it is Halloween weekend. But it's been scary to see (laughs) how poor they've actually performed at times over the last few weeks against these higher level teams. And my biggest worry, something that is troubling me, worrying me, is the Bills' inability to, quote-unquote, establish the run. We're here week eight, doing a week eight pregame show, Kevin, and throughout this entire season, we haven't seen the Buffalo Bills on offense really establish a run game. I saw last week against the Jets, they were able to utilize Zach Moss a little bit more um, he was pretty rock steady in the limited work that he got. Do you anticipate Moss getting more of the workload and, and Singletary taking a back seat? How do you see this run game kind of shaking out, in particular against the New England Patriots defense that has not been that great against the run? Yeah, uh, I think you're going to start seeing more from Moss. I think at the beginning of the season, it was basically going to be a 50 50 type of thing, but uh, Moss. When he's in the game, the run game moves just that much better. You know, mm-hmm. kind of snakes to say, I'm looking out my window right now with the wind blowing the trees around and the driving rain. You're going to have to run uh, right, the right. ball. And right. the Patriots, as you said, they haven't been that great. Um, possibly the outside running game, not so much up the middle, but you have Moss and Singletary that can get to that outside. That's where the Patriots are weak. So if you can start to generate that, <clears throat> excuse me, and move the ball uh, on the ground, again, hard to say that playing the Patriots is a game to help you fix things. But this right. could be the case that the Patriots might end up being just that perfect opponent the Bills running game needed to get on track this season. 
As far as the man, the myth, the legend, the favorite son of Buffalo, Josh Allen, um, how do you evaluate Josh Allen in 2020 throughout this season thus far? Obviously, we touched on they started 4-0. Their offense was red hot. And now these last few weeks against Tennessee, Kansas City, and um, the Jets, we've seen Allen somewhat struggle a, a little bit. What do you see when, you, when you're watching the game as far as w- week one to week four, Josh Allen, to now? Where is he at as far as his game goes? I think Josh Allen keeps progressing, and it's what you mm-hmm. want from him, um, be it from year one to two to three, from week one to two. Yeah, he regressed a little bit, but uh, I don't want to make excuses. The players won't, but I will for them. That was a crazy couple of weeks where they didn't it know was. if they were playing the Tennessee Titans or if the Chiefs were coming up next. Are you playing mm-hmm. them on Sunday, Monday, or Tuesday? When are you playing the Chiefs? It was a real hectic couple of weeks, not on schedule for these guys. Um, If you've ever played sports, you know that a lot of it is creature of habit during the week. Maybe a little superstition rolled in there, but you kind of want to stay on the same path week after week. And we know with Thursday games and Sunday night football and Monday night, it's it's not always going to be that way. But when games are up in the air until a Friday afternoon and I'm out on the golf course and find out the Bills are now playing on a Tuesday, not on a Monday, you know, imagine what that's like for them on a Friday. And there's always that case of, They're practicing really well, like, you know, following all the guys that cover the team yourself, John Scott, you know, you guys are tweeting about how they look in practice. And then sometimes you can practice really well, but things just don't add up, not even due to the fact that your opponent is prepared, just things just might not be clicking. And with John Brown out, with Zach Moss being out, now he's finally back. Brown is expected to be back. I think it's going to make a big difference for Josh Allen. Yeah, and jo- I mean, Josh has done well. I mean, you look at mm-hmm. the Jets. They moved the ball um, right. whenever they wanted. They just couldn't get in the end zone. Still over 300 yards passing. I right. mean, if you, if you went back to last year and the Bills had a game like that against the Jets, you would have said, wow, Josh Allen over 300 yards passing. He's coming along real nice. But we kind of got spoiled the first four weeks on what right. Josh Allen was doing which is, again, I've been covering the team for 20 years. It's hard to get your head wrapped around what you're used to covering and and now criticizing the quarterbacks every little move when quarterback play had been, you know, what it was right. for uh, 17 years or so. But it, it looks like if they you get John Brown back, Moss regularly in it, and I think against this Patriots team, also with the passing game, they're not going to let Josh Allen sling it way downfield. Mm-hmm. But I'm telling you, the short passing game for players like Beasley and Tyler Cross and Zach Moss and Singletary out of the backfield, that also should be there for the taking for uh, Josh Allen in the passing game against this Patriots defense. I think this could be a true bounce back opportunity. And even the great Bill Belichick has somewhat recognized the state of the Patriots and saying that um, they're in a cap situation. They weren't able to really add the players that they wanted to add. They're in a little bit of a state of transition, obviously post Tom Brady and that they have a lot of holes that needed that need to be filled heading into 2021. So hopefully a quarterback as dynamic as Josh Allen, who in my opinion, outside of Mahomes, Lamar, Kyler Murray is up there as well, but Josh Allen, such a dynamic athlete and, as you mentioned, covering the team for 20 years, knowing that we have a quarterback that can throw the ball a country mile and run the football with the pure strength and dominance that Josh Allen has, what has it been like these last few years kind of witnessing Josh Allen's arrival to where he is right now for you covering the team? It's what, as someone who covers the team, is what you were looking for this entire time. When they went out and drafted J.P. Lossman, I mean, I don't want to speak for anyone else in the media, but there was, in my opinion, no one saw that and was like, okay, here we go. Now the ship is going to be righted and we're on the, and then they decided to put Lossman ahead of Drew Bledsoe and Bledsoe pieced out. He was like, I I don't want to be a backup to this kid. Um, You never really thought, okay, in a few years, we might have something here or the Bills might have something here. When they got Josh Allen and he was basically forced in in week one because Nathan Peterman 
was a train wreck uh, <laughs> in that first game. Um, you kind of, he's young. He played at Wyoming. Um, but there was something there. And then going into uh, this year, there was like, well, if Josh Allen can fix this, if he can get more accurate, this and that. And then I think it was a pleasant surprise the first four weeks of the season. I, I go back to the Rams game when they jumped out to that huge lead. Sure, it ended up being a lot closer, but, I mean, that's the Rams. They were in the Super Bowl a few years ago, you know? Right. Um, so I think Allen has progressed. He just – He's got to keep going in the rest of the team. And again, I'll go back to John Brown. John Brown being out there and being healthy is key to this whole thing. Yeah, I remember the training camp, um, the first training camp for John Brown. I remember thinking going in that Josh Allen was going to be feeding Cole Beasley. But then watching the practice, he was feeding John Brown. It was like their chemistry was just instant, instant chemistry. Um, so having him out there is is crucial to this team. And you know, looking at the future, I think year four, year five, these next couple years, Josh Allen is going to take a, a real big leap, especially if this team surrounds him with more weapons and more pieces along this offense and our defense as well. So I'm looking forward to that for sure. Um, yeah, I think I wanna... – uh, go ahead. Oh, no, you're good. Well, I was going to say, I, I think, um, like, if you were – wanting to build an offense i think what the bills have on offense right now is what most teams would want right you know you have solid play at tight end if uh why am i blanking on the tight end there <laughs> croft and knox 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 yeah, yeah, yeah um you know he's he's had drops here and there and stuff but i think knox is a solid tight end and croft right. has been playing really well in his absence you have Diggs, you have Cole Beasley, you have Brown, you have speedy running backs that can, uh, if the running game gets going, that can help out. I, I just think this offense is is really fun to watch and has right. good players. Finally. Right, yeah. Yeah, and, and Gabe Davis, too. I mean, what a find that was to find him in the middle rounds of the 2020 draft. And I looked at their receivers heading into it thinking, well, they got Stephon Diggs. Maybe they won't attack receiver. Maybe they will. Maybe they won't. And when they did, I was very thankful because I love the um, – opportunity competition breeds success mentality I, I love that and that's what brandon bean and, and mcdermott have somewhat cultivated the last few years here but i want to talk about the opponent in the new england patriots and in particular the patriots moving on from tom brady moving on from tom brady they go with cam newton do you see Cam Newton as the answer, or do you see him as a bridge quarterback that will set them up for maybe drafting a quarterback in 2021, or do you see Cam Newton as the answer for them? Uh, if you ask me uh, week two of the NFL season, I would probably say it looks like Newton will be the guy for some time. But right now, I just think he's there as uh, – because the Patriots have no other option right now. Right. I think if Jared Stidham, if there was anything there with Jared Stidham, you might see him going into this game with how uh, Newton has struggled. So I think it just, you know, it is what it is with Cam Newton right now. And they're probably going to have to move on either looking to draft someone um, or I just don't see, I don't see Cam Newton being there long at all. And you know, the personality traits between Brady and Cam Newton, Tom Brady was always that guy and still is that guy that when he sees his team kind of down in the dumps and, you know, things don't go well, maybe from the opening quarter, he riles guys up where if things don't go right for Cam Newton, it looks like the whole team just kind of comes down and his, his I don't want to say his attitude, but his, his personality just doesn't seem to really fit with Bill Belichick's New England Patriots. What, what do you think of that, just from what you've seen? I think, I think that was the big question going into the season is how Cam Newton would fit in with the Patriot way, the Bill Belichick way. Um, for the most part, at the beginning, I think both sides gave in a little bit. Belichick let Newton do his Newton stuff. Cam Newton kind of followed the Patriot way, but in his own way. Um, mm -hmm. but you're right. Newton's not the guy that, um, 
when he was pulled for Stidham, I think last week, it looked like right. he didn't care that he was pulled. You right. go back to the Chiefs destroying the Patriots a few years ago, and they took Brady out and put in Jimmy Garoppolo with like five minutes left. Tom Brady was ticked off on the sidelines that he was <laughs> even taken out at that point. Cam Newton last week, you see him on the sidelines just shrug his shoulders, and he's laughing with Julian Edelman like, well, you know, let's just wrap this game up and be done with it. And, I mean, Edelman, I think Edelman is checked out too. He sees Brady and Gronk down in Tampa Bay and is basically left twiddling his thumbs up in New England. I'm sure that's not sitting too well with him. I think if Tom Brady was quarterback, Julian Edelman's not getting a minor knee surgery this week. Right. That's a good point. That's a very good point. And when things don't go well for Cam Newton, as you said, you can see it on his face. It's almost as if Cam Newton somewhat mentally checks out and, dare I say it, somewhat quits when things don't really go his way, whereas Tom Brady is the complete opposite. At, what, 42, 43 years old, watched that game last week, Kevin, and he's dropping dimes to Scotty Miller in the in the edge of the end zone. Few throw, I mean, few quarterbacks could make those throws, especially at the age of 42, 43. So it's very interesting how this season has panned out. But um, moving on from that question, my next question regards to the Patriots. This is the age-old question that the media has debated for at least 10 years, you know, knowing that Brady and Belichick would eventually part ways. Who do you see, you know, Matt, who do you feel mattered more to the Patriots, knowing what we know now, Tom Brady or Bill Belichick? I think it was Tom Brady. I, I hmm. always have thought it was Tom Brady. Um, Belichick, before Brady got into the swing of things, the Patriots didn't do that well. When mm -hmm. Belichick ran the Cleveland Browns, they did better, but it wasn't like the Browns. I mean, who knows what the Browns could have turned into with Belichick there. We'll never know. And Nick uh, Saban too, right? Nick Saban right. and a few other coaches, yeah. A lot of those guys. Um, but I think at the end of the day, we're seeing it right now. The You know, players play. Players are the ones who perform out on the field. And I think at the end of the day, um, we're seeing right now that even Tom Brady in his 40s, and it, and it almost appears that it was Brady was basically saw the writing on the wall that he wants to keep playing, but the direction of this football team isn't going how even last year, Brady had no one to throw to, and there's right. even less people to throw to this year on the Patriots. Right. And uh, Brady's having success down in Tampa, and I, he's doing what he does. He's clicking at the right time. Right. Heading into November football, November football in Tampa Bay, too, which Brady, you know, obviously playing in New England, experienced cold, cold football for 20, 20 years. You know, this is 21st season and he's finally in some warm weather. I think that I think the Bucks right now are the NFC favorites. Like I know the NFC is pretty loaded Seattle, you know, but if they start cooking at the right time, it's going to be really tough for any opposing team to stop that offense. Yeah, that it's, should be every team uh, in the NFC except the NFC East, which is horrible and right. <laughs> unwatchable. Yeah, you, but yeah, like a, a Seahawks Redskins game or a Buccaneers game, rather, um, would be something to see. That would right. be something you know you you'd want to you'd want to check out. But yeah, I think right now Brady has the Buccaneers in in a great spot. But man, Seattle looks so good. They do, you know, yeah, and if, and you know, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, they both look really, really good right now. I think that Russell Wilson is one of the most underrated players in the league, maybe the most underrated player in the league. I I don't hear about him getting talked about. I don't hear him getting talked about nearly enough, and um, I, I look forward to seeing how the season materializes. But we also we we have to mention that we share a, a common uh, fandom history. You are from Boston, Massachusetts. I got, if I went on Ancestry.com, I got some family back in the day yeah. from the Massachusetts area. Yeah. I'm sure of it. Um, yeah, I'm positive on that one. Um, I wanted to just get your take going back to 2004, remembering the, in my opinion, the Cinderella baseball team, greatest Cinderella baseball team of all time, the 2004 Boston Red Sox. Take me back to 2004. Where were you at the time in your in your career, you know, in your life, kind of checking out that 2004 Boston Red Sox unprecedented comeback team? 
Well, we'll have to go back to 03 when they lost to the Yankees in game seven. <laughs> Do we that, have to? <laughs> that, well, that is really um, what started it, right? Like, I just remember being furious. Uh, I was living down in Jamestown and uh, working at a TV station we had in Jamestown and also doing part time work up in Rochester uh, during this time. Uh, but I just remember being so furious in 03 after that game. I could not wait for the 04 season to start. And then when you see the Red Sox get into that hole, uh, down three games to none. And it was like, at that time, I remember being like, I just want to watch the team play one more game. And then they won. <laughs> and I'm like, cool, I get to see one more game. And then they win that one. And then you're like, okay, you know, the gloves are off now. This has been the most fun I've had watching baseball the entire summer. The fact that it keeps going on, the fact that they could possibly pull this off against the Yankees and then game seven comes along and uh, you know, it was never in doubt, but you always had that in the back of your mind. Like, well, I'm not going to start celebrating. You know, I had friends that uh, you know, you text or I don't even know if you text back then, but I had a, a <laughs> friend of mine who lived in Florida who, you know, we played baseball as kids together. We were calling each other up after each game. We had rituals that we were going through every <laughs> game day, which is Red Sox <laughs> team. Um, and Bill Miller was my guy that year. You know, you can say whatever you want. Bill Miller getting – Bill Bill Miller being up against uh, – Mo Rivera? Mo. Yep. He's the guy you wanted up against Mo Rivera, uh, Mariano Rivera at the in, in game four. And Bill Miller delivered. I That guy had such a great season, too, in 03 and in 04. It's crazy, too, how they had, like, the Bill Millers, the um, Bell Horns, Mark Bell Horn. They had guys that they somewhat rented that played such a major part in that 2004 World Series championship, especially the comeback, you know, beating the Yankees. And to me, like the one thing that I remember as, cause I was, you know, I was in I was maybe sixth, sixth grade during the Aaron Boone <laughs> thing. I went to school the next day, boldly went to school the next day. I'm at Belknap middle school in Lockport with a Red Sox Jersey, Red Sox, you know, hat, everything. And all these kids were picking on me. I opened myself <laughs> up to it. I don't know why I did it, but Hey, that just shows the true fan that I, that I am and, and was uh, for, for that season. But I, I greatly uh, enjoyed, you know, remembering that, you know, even the Bill Miller, a lot of people forget Bill Miller was such a big part of that comeback with that hit against Mariano Rivera. Yeah. And you go back in late July, uh, it was the uh, A-Rod and Veritech fight uh, mm -hmm. game that went into extra innings and Bill Miller hit a walk off home run off Mo. Right. To win that game. I remember that because I was at someone's wedding, and that's how I remember their anniversary every year. Is uh, <laughs> oh, this is the day uh, Veritech beat up uh, A Rod. Must be their anniversary. <laughs> now, looking at the present day Red Sox too, like there's a lot of chatter that um, Alex Cora could be coming back. What do you think of that as a Red Sox fan? Do you want that? Do you want to see that happen, or or no? I don't know. I mean. I, in all honesty, and I know because of COVID and stuff, I really did not pay attention to the Red Sox this summer. I didn't either. Yeah, I um, didn't either. I think I mentally checked uh, out. <laughs> yeah, and they were just so bad that, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I think even having the Blue Jays playing downtown Buffalo had me, because we were kind of basically covering them, had me more interested right. in how the Blue Jays were doing than how the Red Sox. So. Right. From what I saw, the Red Sox were just a mess this year. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. I, I don't think core is the answer, but at this stage, I also don't. You I don't really know what don't is the opinion, answer, right? Because because they're, they're so bad. Yeah, they're so bad. It's like what what direction do you go in? And you just kind of hope for the best, I suppose. Right. Um, but yeah, Kevin, it was an honor chatting with you on the Thomas Dick Sports Podcast today. I really appreciate you coming on. Um, folks, check out the Spectrum News Blitz with Kevin Carroll and John Scott, another friend of the show. Uh, I greatly enjoy their 
interaction, their banter, their dynamic duo that they are. Um, positive vibes for the Buffalo Bills. Kevin, what do you have as your score prediction for this Bills Patriots game? Uh, I said this to John Scott back on Thursday, and I'm going to stick to it. I think with the rain and the wind, I think we're looking at a low scoring game. I have it Bills 20, Patriots 10. Um, but it's not really going to be that close. I think the Patriots might get like a late touchdown. It'll be 20 to three and, and 20 to 10 is the final. Cause it doesn't look like it's getting any better. <laughs> no, November 1st, we're, we're embracing the Western New York winter already. <laughs> right. I Crazy. think I heard that it might snow out later tonight. That's what I um, heard too. Yep. Bring that snow um, in a little bit early. I wouldn't mind that. Because John nah, I wouldn't Scott's mind out it. at the field. I'm safe inside the studio. So. Oh, nice, nice. <laughs> yeah, you want John to get snowed on while you're nice and warm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Kevin, thank you so much. Pleasure as always. And uh, feel free to uh, hop on the show any, anytime. I'd love to have you again. Thank you. Anytime you want me on, just let me know. All righty. Take care, Kevin. Go Bills. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> That was Kevin Carroll of Spectrum News Buffalo joining me on the Thomas Take Sports Podcast. And as I said, uh, check out the Spectrum News Blitz with Kevin Carroll and John Scott. Uh, great show. They have a great um, just chemistry on that show. It's one of my favorite Buffalo Bills shows out there um, to, uh, to tune into. So with that being said, I am Ryan Thomas. That was the Thomas Take Sports Podcast. And I want to remind you guys that you can find the show on all major podcasting platforms, whether that be uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, um, YouTube, Google Podcasts. This show is streamed as well on my YouTube channel, um, the Thomas Take Sports Podcast. And realistically, I agree with virtually all of Kevin's thoughts on this game. This should be a, a open things up in terms of the run game opportunity for the Buffalo Bills. Should be an opportunity to see Zach Moss. Devin Singletary, I think Moss might get more of a workload being that he's finally healthy and he's a running back that can bang it in between the tackles. We know the power, the strength that Zach Moss has as a running back uh, in between the tackles. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. Let's get to some comments here as well. Um, let's see here. Joey Medina. Whoa, that's a big comment. Won't put that on. Hi, Ryan and Kevin. Great show today. Hey, I coached a flag football team back in my Marine Corps days, and I came up with pretty good plays. I should mention some of the folks in the team were good athletes. We barely won two games on the first season. Not a great coach or anything, but felt like I made the right calls. Feel like this equates to how or how our team operates nowadays. Great players, great coaching staff. What's your take on that? Um, I truly feel that. It is up to the coach to maximize the strengths and minimize the weaknesses of the talent that he has at his disposal. And we've seen the Bills do that. You know, the first four weeks are always that caveat to any other take that I have that might be deemed as negative because the first four weeks for this Bills team, they were very good weeks. They looked very good on offense. Defense looked okay. But now we just need to get back to that. And this is the perfect opportunity, a perfect rebound game to do that against the Patriots who are reeling. I'm Ryan Thomas. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Thomas Take Sports Podcast. Take care. Go Bills. I got the Bills winning. Uh, let's just say 17 to 7, just to provide a different score prediction than my guest on today's show, Kevin Carroll. Take care, everyone.